Um, hey, everybody. Uh, as folks trickle in, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. My name is Liz Brownlee, and um, I am the brand new Farmer Rancher Grant Coordinator. So I'm just as new as all of you. Um, but I have a, a long history with Sarah. I had a Farmer Rancher Grant years ago, and I've served on the review committee, and I really love this program. So I'm excited to be um, learning how to make it all work behind the scenes so that you all can do your good work on your farms. Um, and I'm not the only Sarah staff person here. We thought we'd go around and introduce ourselves so that when you need to reach out to get help or assistance on anything, you'd know who we are. Um, so, Marie, do you want to go next? Be glad to. Hi, all. I am Marie Flanagan. I'm the Communications Specialist for North Central Region SARE. Um, my office is in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. We do not have weather here today. Um, and I am here today um, running the Zoom. So I will be your Zoom assistant if you need anything. Um, and I think for this presentation, we're going to ask that um, unless it's a question that you need answered immediately, if you can hold questions till the end or put them in the chat, then we'll kind of address questions at the end of the presentation. Um, but if there's a pressing question that you think needs to be answered immediately or concern, feel free to raise your hand or um, put it in the chat. Thank you. Jean, do you want to jump in? Yes, I can do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Jean Andreessen, and I am the person that sets up contracts for the Farmer Rancher Grants. And some of you have heard from me, and some of you haven't, but you all will at some point. Um, I am just starting to send out emails now. And um, just to clarify some of the stuff in your um, in your budgets, and once we get that all worked out, we'll send it up to accounting, and they'll set up a contract um, we call them purchase orders, I guess, and um, getting signatures and all that kind of stuff, and then you're ready to roll. Awesome. Thanks, Jean. And last but not least would be Joan. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Hi, everybody. I'm Joan Benjamin. I have coordinated the Farmer Rancher Grant Program for almost the past 20 years. So I'm going to be retiring soon and um, Liz is taking over. You'll be in good hands. I'm just here for the next couple of months while we do the transition. So I'll be helping with this presentation if my internet holds. But as some of you heard, we're having some severe thunderstorms roll through here in Columbia, Missouri. And uh, so I may lose internet. All right. Well, you guys, our plan for today is to bombard you with lots of information. Uh, we're going to share all the slides, we're going to record this and put it onto the SARE website and we'll send that to you um, so that you can refer to this later because you won't need all of this information today or tomorrow, but we want you to have a sense of how this whole thing works so that um, as you go into your SARE project, you know how reporting and finances and all the things happen and then you can refer back to this as you need it um, or email us. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and show you some pretty slides. And there are so many bars in my way. Give me a second here. Okay, can you guys see the opening slide? Got a thumbs up. Okay, let's dive in then. Um, so, uh, hi, I'm Liz. I'm a farmer. I'm in Southeast Indiana, where it is not currently storming. Um, so if Joan's um, uh, internet runs out, um, I'm going to cover the nitty gritty of how the reporting works. But I definitely have the pleasure of just doing some of the intro today. Um, so what do you need to know? I think you need to know that we're going to walk you through a lot of the behind the scene things that need to happen to make your grant work. Um, so that includes grant finances, like how to receive your grant payments and how to request a budget change and how to request an extension if you need one and the steps for reporting. Um, and that's going to be the bulk of what we do today. And um, yeah, like I said, we're going to share all of this. So no worries if you don't catch every single thing. But before we dive into the nitty gritty, I do want to say congratulations. I'm really excited that you all have SARE grants. The Farmer Rancher grants are really the cornerstone of what SARE does. And we're really proud of all of you and impressed by you and excited to work um, to make this 
um, a really successful and, and positive piece of your world over the next two years. Um, this is my contact information. You can reach me by email or text or, or a phone call. And, um, and then the rest of the SARE staff is here to help too. So SARE uses an online reporting system, really similar to how you guys applied. Um, but the thing about the reporting system is um, the folks who receive grants are the ones who show up on that. And it's it feeds into our project database. And that database can be used by farmers nationwide to learn from the SARE projects. Um, and so you're going to um, provide reports. And that's part of how you're going to document and share what you're learning. Um, and I think it's worth noting that the, the database has decades worth of reports from farmers all around the country who have been doing on the ground research um, and applied research and education. And so it's a, it's a really neat little treasure trove or really neat big treasure trove. <laughs> um, and so that's why we're going to take so much time to help you understand how to add your information to your report um, because we want other farmers to be able to learn from your good work. Um, for So that you know for right now, you do have a listing um, that's specific to your project. And it really just has some of the basics of your proposal um, on your project page. Um, and you'll be able to add to that um, a couple different times during your project. So let's see, if you want to find your project page and, and maybe share it because you're excited and proud of what you're doing, you're gonna need to know your project number. Um, so to show you what this looks like, it starts with FNC, which stands for Farmer North Central. Um, and then it's got the two digits of the year you were funded. So yours will be 24. And then it has a unique project number. And so yours are all, I think, 14 something something. Um, and that means that we've funded over 1400 farmer rancher grants here in the North Central region, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, what else should you know about that? Oh, you'll also see this project number on a lot of your paperwork, like what you get from Jean. Um, so now you know what it means. Um, so these reports, you're going to provide a progress report each year of your project. Um, each year it's active. So for most people, that means two reports um, and um, one a year in and one at the end of the project. If you have to get an extension, um, you'll have to do another report. So you have 23 months to complete your grant project and um, you can ask for an extension, but we'll get to that later. Um, if you have a one year project, which you might, um, that's totally allowed, you can fill out your just one report because the progress report and final report are sort of the same in that case. Um, let's see, we're gonna move on. Okay, so grant finances. Um, you're going to receive grant funds in three payments. 50% at the start of the project, 35% after one year, after you've submitted that one-year progress report and it's approved, and then the last 15% when the final report is approved. Um, so that's one thing that's really um, unique about this grant program is that it's not all just a reimbursement. We give you a good chunk of the money up front, a good chunk of the money part way in, and then the last bit is the reimbursement. Um, <clears throat> let's see. You don't get that first chunk of money, though, until you've signed a contract and done all the paperwork with Gene. So be on the lookout for that. It's got to be signed and returned and approved. Um, because these grants are issued as a contract, um, I'm reading my notes here because this is important, um, you will receive a 1099 form for the grant payments. And we encourage you to contact a tax professional if you have questions about how this might affect your taxes. Um, it's always good as a farmer to be saving your receipts and invoices for your own tax purposes, but we do not need to see them. North Central SARE does not want to see them. In fact, those are for you, but we rely on the basic reporting project that, or process that you'll do with us, where you'll tell us um, if you spent the money you were planning to and, and how, and that's all we need to see. Um, and so, in fact, at the end of the first year of your project, um, when you submit that progress report, you'll update the budget and you'll show what did you spend in year one and how much is left for the second year of the project, if you have one. Um, and then when you submit your final report, that'll show all the money spent on the project. Let's see here. Okay. What if your budget needs to change? Um, changes happen, we understand that. Prices go up, 
you might find a good deal on one thing and maybe that frees up a little bit of money for something else that was more expensive. Um, a couple of notes on that though. <clears throat> if the change is $1,500 or more, you will need prior approval. So you would email me and say, hey, I have this big change in my project. It doesn't change the scope of my project, but I need to make this change. And then we would figure that out together. But you need approval before you spend that money if it's a big change, right? 1500 or more. Smaller changes are generally okay if they're just about, you know, hey, this price of this thing that I proposed, uh, you know, that included in my proposal has changed um, or some other simple change. Um, but if you have any questions, reach out to us and, and ask. Um, when you're submitting your uh, report, your progress report and your final report, there's a uh, part of that that includes the budget and you'll be able to note um, in the notes, you'll be able to note why you made your changes. Um, and yeah, I guess I should just say, finish that by saying we want you to be successful. Um, and so we want to work with you on budget changes if they're needed. Speaking of changes, um, what if you need an extension? So um, grant recipients can request a six or 11 month extension. And um, that's because sometimes things happen beyond your control, like weather that prevent you completing the project the way you had planned. Um, we'll note that this is called a no cost extension um, that you can ask for. And all that means is you're not asking for any extra money. You just need extra time. So no cost, just time. Um, the, let's see, note that even if you just have a 12 month project, you're still gonna get a contract that shows 23 months. And that's what we hope that everybody can finish their projects in those 23 months. But if you do need an extension, a um, couple of things, you'd need to be up to date on your reporting um, and you'd need to submit a request by September of the second year of your project. So not on the last day when it is done, but a couple months ahead of time, um, so that we can review your request and and work with you on that. Um, you can email me, essentially, to start that process. And we do have sort of a, a outline of what you'd need to include in a letter to make that request. And we've got that in the notes of this PowerPoint. But essentially, you'd say, hey, I'm requesting a no-cost extension. Here's the project number. Um, and um, in order my, to complete my project, I need a new end date of fill in the blank. And here's why, a brief explanation of why. And then we would let you know via email if it's approved and, and or ask further questions. And that usually takes a week or two. So um, once approved, then you'd get an email from us with the, the updated end dates and that would be for your records too. But maybe you won't need one, but if you do, it's okay. All right, last thoughts on reporting before I hand it off to Joan to do the nitty gritty here. I just wanna say, um, we're gonna send you a copy of these slides. I would recommend saving them for your reference in the future because it's got lots of goodness, especially in the notes, what I'm reading from, what I'm cheating from. Um, don't be afraid of the reporting, even though it seems like a lot. Um, you're gonna see in a minute, it is, it's complex, um, but this webinar has step-by-step -step instructions. There's, there are, um, there's gonna be a recording of this also. So we hope it'll make it easier for you when you get to those reporting stages. And that by hearing about it today, you're gonna to have a sense of what you need to be keeping track of. Um, know that we're here to help. And remember that the report, the whole point is that it, this is not just um, paperwork, this is a way for you to share what you learn with other farmers. Um, okay, so with that, Joan, do you wanna take it away? Sure. Okay. And, I and you can tell me. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I'm, I've got the slides, so you tell me when to advance and I will for you. Great, great. And I just wanted to let everybody know that your start date for your projects is March 15th of 2024. That's when you can begin your project. And even though you won't have your contract at that point, it, you can begin your project in items that you get approved in your budget. If you purchase them starting on March 15th and after, those can be applied to the budget. If anything you purchase before that start date cannot be applied to your grant budget. Your end date is February 15th of 2026. So your first project progress report would be due on February 15th of 2025. All right, so when you're ready to turn in your progress report or your final report, here's what you do. 
There are reporting system instructions. We have an electronic reporting system. So the first thing you would do is go to projects.sare.org, and that's where you will log in and begin your report. When you're logged in, you'll be able to see your profile, which is the information about you, your name, address, et cetera, and you can click on edit on that profile page if you need to make any changes. You'll also see the project overview for your project. And on that page, you'll be able to look to access your progress, re your uh, project report, information products, which I'll go over later, and other items that we ask you to fill out, like your benefits and impacts and commodities and practices. And those are just checklists that we ask you to fill out because they help people search for your project. Next slide, please. So when you go to projects.sare.org, this is what you're gonna see. And on the left-hand side that uh, where there's an arrow, you'll see where it says login. That's where you'll log in. And you will use for your username or email, use the email address that you used to apply. The, the one that you use for SARE correspondence, that's the one we're gonna be using for your login. And then your password. And this is the same as you used when you um, set up your application. But if you don't remember it, you can see that arrow on the bottom right where it says create or reset a password or find a lost username. So if you happen to forget those things, you can, can use those options. All right, so you go in here, put in your email address, enter your password and log. click on login. If you have any trouble, you can contact projects at sare.org and that will be our IT person if those are uh, if there's some technical issue. Otherwise, you can just contact Liz or another staff member and, and they can help you through the system. We use this system all the time, so don't struggle with it. We don't want you to spend a lot of time. We can easily tell you how something works or if there's a glitch in the system. So we don't want you to spend hours trying to figure something out when we can help you in just a short phone call or an email. All right, next slide. So this is called the SARE Grant Management System. On the right-hand side here, you'll see there's the profile and you can edit your profile if you need to have an address change or a phone number change or something along those lines. What you will see where the arrow on the left is, when you open this up, it's got the project coordinator links. It will show all the projects that are associated with you. And if this is your first one, you'll just see one. And you can click on that and it will take you to your project. All right, let's go to the next slide. So when you go to your project, you'll see a screen like this. And what you want to do is click on working version and that will open up the version that you can work on. Before you do that, we do ask you to fill out this information down below, which is the benefits and impacts and commodities. And there's also one called practices. And as I mentioned, those are simply checklists that help identify what kind of a project you have as far as the topic area goes so that people who are searching for your project can find it better. And you have to have these filled out or you can't submit your report. So you do need to get those filled out. Okay, then go to the working version and click on that. We use a progressive reporting system. So what that means is you fill out the progress report, uh, filling in all the areas that you can, that you have information for. And then when your final report comes along, you just add to the progress report. So you just keep adding to your report edit if you need to, or just keep adding information to it. If you have a one-year project and your project's finished at the end of the year, you just complete the whole report all at once and do a final report without the interim progress report. Okay, let's go to the next page. So you've clicked on working version, and this is what you'll see. So there's a series of headings and next to each heading, there's an edit button. And when you click on that edit button, it'll open a text box. And in that text box is where you can type information. 
But as you'll see here, some of the information from your proposal has already been imported into your report. So for instance, the summary and the project objectives, those are already there for you. So you don't need to re-enter those. Okay, and on the top right, where you see the arrow, you see the project overview. So you can return to the project overview page and, and see other information about your port report, like when your due dates are. Um, this shows you here, for instance, how much your project was funded for, the end date that's expected, and information about you. And then the project coordinator is listed and people can open that up if they want to see your address or email. So let's go to the next page. When you open these uh, areas, uh, clicking on edit, then you do need to save after you add, uh, enter information or it won't save the information. After that initial information, you're going to see this cooperator section. This is just if you have a cooperator in your project, that's someone who's playing a major role in helping you with the research or, or educational activities that you're doing. This is not for project coordinators or leaders. So you don't put your own information in there or any co-coordinator information. This is for other cooperators. If you don't have any, just leave it blank. And then you can go on to your budget. The budget, as you see here, is also imported from your proposal, except that if Jean has had to work with you to make any changes to your budget, she will enter them in this budget for you online. So the budget you see will be the contract budget. So what's approved in your contract is what will appear here. And if this up at the top says contract budget has approved, has been approved, that means Jean has looked it over and approved it and the approved budget column, which is frozen and you cannot change it, um, that will show how your budget was approved for the contract. We are making a change to the budget this year. We're gonna add another column where we can show changes to your budget, but otherwise you will go in here at your progress report or final report and show what you spent in the first year of your project and the different line items. Um, and then the system will figure it for you, show the total uh, grant funds that have been spent so far on that item and the remaining balance that you have to spend in that item. When you click on edit, it's going to open it up so that you see a different view of this that you can work in. The budget is only visible to administrators like Liz or, or me, and so um, the public does not see your budget. You can add areas, think information in the notes, but if there's information that you want people to see, information about something about your project or how pricing worked or something, make sure you put that in the narrative because they will not see it if you put it in the budget area. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So when you click on edit in the budget area, it opens this vertical view. So this is just one category, this first category. So the budget category is personnel. It gives the budget description that you had put in, the approved budget amount that was $300 and where the, that second lower arrow is pointing, that's where you add, okay, I spent $250 in the first year. And then you'll click on save and go on and can do another item until you've completed your budget. So just use this to show how you spent grant funds. That's all we want to see in here is how you spent grant funds. If you spent your own money, feel free to mention that in the narrative, but don't put it in the budget. Okay, let's go on to the next item. Um, and also in these budgets, we ask you to use whole numbers only. So round up or down to have a whole number in here. Let's go to the next page. Oh, wait, wait, no, stop right there. Uh, if you wanna make minor changes to the, your budget, you can fill in the amount that you spent. Like in this one, it's showing you spent $113 instead of the $100 that you were budgeted. And then in the notes, explain what happened. Uh, if we get that change column put in, you, you'll be able to show in there that you, that you increased this, you wanted to increase the amount on this one. But for minor changes, that's fine. For major changes of $1,500 or more, be sure to contact Liz first to make sure that that change is okay and she'll let you know if there's questions about your budget. All right, when you're done with the budget, click save and you see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's the save button. You have to hit save or it won't save your work. Only administrators can add a new budget item. 
or remove a budget item. So um, if you have to make a change along those lines, be sure to contact Liz and she can help you with that. Okay, so when you're entering information uh, uh, about your report, you have two options. The recommended way is you just enter information right into it. So for instance, if you open up this particular section, it opens up this box and you can add this text in here that, that you see. And if you want to um, work first in a word processor and copy and paste the information in, you can do that. And if you're just using text, that's fine. But if you have other information that you're trying to add like tables and things, it works better if you actually create a table in the system uh, because sometimes you lose formatting otherwise. So up at the top, uh, up at the top of your screen, you'll see the, you, you know there's options where you can use bold text or italic text or bullets. Off to the far right, there's a, a symbol for a table, and you can see that um, you can use that to create a table in the text if you need to. Otherwise, if you have something else that you want to add, you can click on this add media button at the top and that will allow you to add a table or photos or things like that. And I'll show you how that works. There's also some questions that are just going to ask you for numbers and you can fill in those numbers. Always be sure to save so it saves your work or, it, or, uh, or it'll just go away. All right, let's go to the next page. So here, for instance, is the research section. And there's information here where it says, um, if you click on it, you'll see there's this results and discussion area and there's specific questions to prompt you on what to put in, like what results did you achieve? How were they measured? And so you, you'll know what we're looking for in that section. But anytime you have questions, just call or email and ask. We're just glad to talk to you about it. That is why we're here. So don't worry about trying to contact us to see if, if that's gonna uh, be something that you should or should not put in your report. So um, fill in all the, all the missing information for each section that you have information for. And if you don't have information for it yet, if it's a required section, you can just say, this is gonna happen in the second year of my project. But for instance, if it's asking for information about outreach and you're not doing your field days or different things until the second year, just say, you know, this is gonna happen in the second year. You can see that this particular part has an attachment. So there's it, um, just above the arrow, it says experimental layout and they've added this link and I'll show you how you can do that. Um, there's also this question that people often miss under research, which is the participation summary, which just asks you how many farmers are participating in your research or education project. So just fill in that number. And then again, be sure to click on save before you move to the next section. Next slide. So here are some of the other headings that you're going to see, you see under that participation summary at the top. There's education and outreach, learning outcomes, project outcomes, participants, which is optional, and information products. And um, so you can go through, click on the edit button for each one and fill it in if you have information for it. If you don't, go on. And if the, it asks you if you need that, um, if the system tells you you have to fill this in, just say it's going to be happening in the second year. If you When you save this, it is a draft. You can make changes before you submit it and you can keep working on it. So if you open this learning outcomes section and fill it out and then think and save it and then say, oh, I want to make a change to that, just click on edit again. You can get right back in and work on it again. And even after you submit your report, we have a button that says unsubmit. So if you forgot something, you can unsubmit and go back. And if and if you just aren't sure what to do, uh, we can approve it for you and say, okay, it's it's approved so you can go work on it some more if there's something you forgot. So don't get nervous about it. The public doesn't see it until we approve it. So uh, if there's questions or things, we'll ask you and and you don't need to worry about if it's perfect or not. 
All right. So for the progress report, you fill out everything you have. For a final report, you will fill out all the sections that are remaining. Make any edits you may need to in the other areas and click on save. And let's go to the next page. So here is how you add attachments. So for instance, in this results and discussion section, any section that has an add media button is somewhere where you can add a table or photos or um, other materials like that. So, uh, or even a video if you want to. You'll click on the add media button. First, put your cursor where you want the item to appear. So if you're gonna have some text first and then say, here's our plot layout that we used, type your information in first, then put your cursor where you want this photo or drawing or whatever it is to appear, and then go to the next page and it will take you to this media page where it says add media. The top left arrow is pointing to upload files. You click on upload files and then select files. And that lets you select a file from your computer. Uh, you need to have it in a PDF format or Excel. And, and it tells you what things are will be accepted and what things won't. Um, this is saying the maximum upload file is 128. Um, megabytes, but actually that's been lowered, I believe to 64 megabytes. So if you have something that's really large, like a, maybe a video and it's just gonna be larger than our system can handle, you can, if you have a, say a YouTube video you wanna add, just put in a link to it and, and instead of trying to insert it into the system. Okay, so once you've selected your file, you'll, it will, uh, like in this case, it's this plot map, and you'll see it appears up there at the top right, and you and it'll have the title of whatever your your image was labeled. So in this one, it's plot map two. Add a caption, and the caption. This isn't the caption that's going to appear in your text. This is a caption that just helps you find this particular photo in the media library. So just uh, make sure it's something that will help you find it. And you may wanna even put your project number with it so that it's easy to find it if you need it later. And then click insert into post and you'll see um, what uh, how it appears in your report. And yes, I just looked at my notes and yes, it is a limit of 64 megabytes now. So we'll need to change that in this PowerPoint for you. All right, so the next slide will show you what happens once you click on insert into post. And so there's the plot maps right there. And then you can add a caption there in the text to say like this one, I plan to set up the experiment. I'm gonna use the plot map as shown and give any details about it. So people know what it is, the images uh, that, that you're showing if, or if it's photos so they know what you're talking about. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So, if you submit photos with your grant project, you're saying that you have permission to do that. They're your photos. And I'm going to let Marie talk about this because she's our communication specialist. And that we also have something new if you're if you're um, using photos that have people under 18 years old. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a... Um... A, a slightly new way of handling photos for our region. And this applies only to photos that have youth depicted in them, just so you're aware. So we, um, we certainly encourage you and support you uploading images with your reports. We'd love to see those images of your project and its progress. If you're uploading photos of um, adults or photos in your field, things like that, there's no additional forms required. You simply check the box and upload the images. This additional form is required if you're uploading images of children. And so um, the form will be made available to you at the time of uploading the images. It will be made available to you um, at the end of the month here. I will send you an email about it so you'll have the form on hand. Basically, it requires that parents consent to you uploading images of their child to 
our SARE website. Um, so if that's something that you plan to do as part of your project, you would need to have a signed consent form from the parents in order to do that. If you have a consent form already set up for your organization, that will not serve SARE's purpose. We all, you also need to have the form for SARE signed as well. Um, and this is something that we talk to USDA attorneys about. So um, uh, I, th I think I saw a question in the chat about this. Um, so if you have a consent form already for your organization that you're having parents sign, that works for your organization, but it doesn't work for SARE. So we have to, you would have to get this additional form signed if you wanted to upload images of youth to your report. Um, and that's, that's the requirement that we've been instructed to share. Um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me or Liz, and we can kind of talk with you about that. Again, you're certainly not required to upload images at all for your report, but we do love to see images. And this form is only required for images that depict youth. Let's look at the next slide and you'll see where you can find this form. So under the information product section, you'll see signed media release forms, and that's where it will be. Uh, you'll also see it in the project overview section under information products. So there's a couple of different places that you'll find it. And feel free to work on your report throughout the year. So until you submit it, uh, we don't get a message saying that it's ready to look at. But once you click submit, then we get a message saying this is ready to look at and to approve. So uh, if, if it works for you to work on it throughout the year while you remember things and plop things in there, go ahead. It, that's perfectly fine. It's your workspace and that's why it's called the working version. Let's go to the next slide. There is a question, Marie, about if they blur faces, is that acceptable? I'd have to get clarification on that. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that right now. Okay, good. We'll, we'll let you know. All right. So when you've completed your report, you click on this go to submit button that's on the lower left hand side and click on it. If you're pro if this is for a progress report, it, this is telling you your report is incomplete. You, you're missing the description of your operation and your outreach activities. So you can click on each one of those and fill it in. You can click on and add the description of your operation if that was missing and the outreach activities, like I mentioned before, if the um, if it's not gonna happen until your second year, the system doesn't recognize that you've entered outreach activities. It only recognizes that you entered something. And so you can just say, we're gonna conduct our outreach in the second year and that's fine. And then in the final report, you can add all your outreach information. If instead this was the final report, you can look below and it says for the final report, you're missing your research results and discussion and the number of farmers and ranchers participating in the research and the number of farmers and ranchers participating in educational activities. But if you're working on a progress report, you can just ignore what's missing for the final report. It's just the system telling you what areas are still blank. So once you fill in any areas that are missing and save, then uh, you can click on go to submit report again and you'll see the next page. And then it once again asks you to click submit report. If it's your final report, click this box that says this is the final report. If it's a progress report, don't click the box. And But you know these things are not mistakes that, that are gonna have any impact on you. If you click final report and it's a progress report, we'll just ask you, did you really mean this to be a final report? And you'll say no, and we'll unclick the box. So these, you know, these aren't things you need to worry or fret over. So then it's kind of asking you, you know, basically, are you sure you want to submit? So you click submit. And then it says, you know, after submitting, you can't edit the report until, again, until an administrator looks at it. So click submit report and you've turned it in. And let's see the next page. Then um, if you happen to remember something after that, there's a, an unsubmit button, like I mentioned before. So you can just click unsubmit, add whatever it is you forgot to add, and then click submit again. So that's perfectly fine. And that submit just sends us an email saying this report is, is ready to be looked at right now. So we'll let you know if we have any questions. And feel free to ask questions anytime. And good luck with it.
Any questions from anybody? I'm just peeking through the chat to see if there were questions. I think, um, Joan, you answered this, but there was uh, the question about, you know, can we work on this as we go? So if we save a section and just don't press submit, it's still a draft. So just to be doubly clear about that, yes, um, you can go through the year and, and knock some of this out. And that's very smart. I did not do that. I think that is a great idea that I should have thought of, right? Um, not so much work at the end of the year, says Emily. Oh, there's a Jean question. When should we expect the contract coming? So the first thing that will happen is I will send you an email that, that explains to you what I need to have clarified or if there's any um, uh, unallowable expenses in your budget. And then um, you will just respond to my email. And um, once we get everything clarified, I will I will either send you a hard copy or send you an email copy and ask you to um, sign or um, fill out the sections indicated. Um, one of the things that you will fill out is an invoice. So, um, and a W-9. So when I get that information back from you, then I send it up to accounting and they do all the things that accounting departments do. I'm not the accounting department, just so you know. Um, and, Usually, I would say that um, the checks are released between four to six weeks after I get your contract back. So it may take a couple weeks for them to set up the um, supplier number or your vendor number, what we call it here. Um, and then once we have that information, the purchase order will be completed. Accounting will probably mail you a copy of that, email you a copy of that. And then you should see the check come about four to six weeks after, about four weeks after that, I would say. So it just kind of depends. Um, oh, there was something I was gonna add in there. Oh, the check will come from the University of Minnesota. So they're not soliciting, you know, for donations or anything. They're actually sending you money. So don't recycle anything you get from the University of Minnesota. The University of Minnesota is the host institution for North Central Region, SARE, and that's why you'll be seeing things from the University of Minnesota. Jean, there's another question for you about the permanent address. So they say, my permanent address on my W-9 is not the same address as my farm. Is it possible to send the grant money to my farm address? So your check is going to go to the address on your W-9. Um, and that is the university's policy. And here's another financial question, and then we're going to get to Emily, who's got her hand up. Um, this person asks, uh, is it common practice to get a bridge loan with the contract to be paid back with the funds? Um, that I do not know, actually. So I, I, I know as, as someone who has had a value added I, producer grant, say it's not. I, I know that that's common for that grant program. I, I've never heard of anybody doing it for our grant program. But that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened. So. Yeah. Joan, were you going to chime in on that? Yeah. I've never heard of anybody doing that with a farmer rancher grant. Mm hmm and then another, a similar uh, sort of follow-up, I was looking for a line of credit to be able to keep moving. Is that okay? As as far as I know. <laughs> so this is this is kind of part Are of your you personal about you? personal farm finances and banking stuff that 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 we're not, you know, we we're usually not privy to. So yes. Does it sound like then that folks can um, utilize whatever banking tools they need to to make this work that the university sure. doesn't have yep. sort of any involvement in that and the, nope. so it's whatever works for people works for us exactly okay good look I learned a thing too thank you guys 
Um, okay, let's see. Um, Emily, you've got your hand up. Go for it. Uh, thanks so much. I uh, I guess um, when I look at my budget, um, one of the major components is um, the farmer's labor, as in mine. <laughs> Um, and I really tried to do a careful job of like, okay, how long do I think this is going to take me? But it's a pretty labor intensive project. And, and so I guess I'm just, um, I'm wondering if you, if, uh, you have requirements for how you're tracking farmer labor. I mean, I certainly will be tracking, uh, temporary work crew, their labor, because I'll be, you know, paying them, but uh, for myself, if there's a requirement for tracking that labor, what you all want to see for that um, to sort of show that this is what I was doing and this is how long it took me. So, um, well, I think I think technically that's a Joan question because um, so I do not um, when you guys submit your budgets as part of your report. It's the farmer rancher coordinator, so Joan or Liz, that reviews your budgets. Once once I um, get your contracts in, you probably won't talk to me very often afterwards, if at all. So your questions will probably be directed. If you were to call me, I would probably direct you to Liz or Joan. Unless Tony. you just want to talk about fly fishing, in which case you should talk to right. Joan all day. Then you can talk uh, to me all day. <laughs> um. Okay, I will say that this is my eighth day of work, so I'm not for sure. But uh, in the same way that we don't um, require receipts for money spent, I would guess that um, it is it, there is nothing that we need to see on how you spent your time. If you say you spent that many hours, we trust you. Um, I will ask Joan specifically um, in case I'm wrong, but... Um, I think that um, one thing that's really special about the farmer rancher grants is that they're farmer driven and that um, what farmers say is um, it, the way Jones described it to me is like people are honest to a fault, you know, like she's had someone try to return three cents or something like that in the past. And um, so I would say, don't worry. We know you guys are doing this in good faith. Hey, Joan here. I'm back by phone. We lost internet. So if you have a question for me, let me know. Yeah, Joan, that's awesome. We did have a question. Um, I did my best to answer it, but I'd love your answer to this. The question was essentially um, the person did her best to um, estimate how much of the farmer time would be required. Um, mm -hmm. Do they need to keep track of that uh, using any certain system or report the actual number of hours spent um, for, for our purposes? We, the only thing you will have to do is in the budget, show how many hours you spent. So if you said you're going to spend 20 hours, if you spend 20 hours, that's fine. If you spend 30 hours, you don't need to tell us you spent 30 hours, unless that's going to be helpful to other farmers or ranchers. So if you can say, you know, I thought that this, and this, this happens all the time. These take much more time than you ever anticipate. So if you're doing something, uh, you know, maybe you're w working with a new type of uh, rotational grazing system and you discover that it's taking much more time than you thought or much less time, that's important information for the farmers and ranchers to know. So then we'd love to hear about it. And you might be tracking that anyway because you're trying to figure out how much is this saving me labor or isn't it. But as far as the budget goes, you know, if you spent – you're, you know, if you know you spent 20 hours, that's fine. Just put in the budget you spent the 20 hours and you likely spent more and that's okay. You don't have to tell us you spent more. If it ends up that, well, you thought you were going to spend 20 hours, but it, something changed and you only spent five, then you may want to move some of those funds to another budget category and you can contact Liz and, and see if that's okay. If it's, a, you know, depending on the amount of the money, if it wasn't a lot of money, you can just move it. Uh, to another category like materials and supplies if something costs more. And that makes me think of one thing that I think we didn't say today. Um, so important clarification, um, totally fine uh, if you have to shift things around because there's a price change or something like that. But note that you can't go, you can't get additional funds than what your budget was approved for. So if you have some sort of change, um, 
we completely understand and we can work within that, but it's working within that original budget that'll be, that was in your proposal and, and, and we'll, what will be in your contract specifically. Um, so maybe that was implied, but good to say. Um, are there other questions? I wanted to let all you guys know that you will probably hear from me by the end of next week with regards to your contract budget. So I have been working on them today. Um, we're working on sending out the emails today. So I just start at the top and work right straight through the list. Um, so just know that they're coming. Okay, well, I think we should um, say adieu for now, but we are here. Just let us know when you have questions. Um, we're so excited for your projects and um, we're here to help. And I'll just let you know, this is being recorded and 